Welcome to Sheltered Homeschooler Reads Harry Potter number 5, which comes to you in the form of a math nerd style graphs and charts video. The most basic and often simplistic way of evaluating characters in a story is whether they are good or whether they are bad. Now, Voldemort obviously is always bad and Dumbledore is basically always good, but this is why I think that Snape is such a fascinating character because he's always moving back and forth, sort of oscillating, if you will, on that x-axis between good and and bad. A slightly more nuanced way of evaluating characters is whether or not that character is sympathetic. For example, we could have an anti-hero. That's a person who does what might otherwise be considered bad things, but because the story is presented from his or her perspective, we have sympathy for that character. An anti-hero would be like a character from Breaking Bad. Now, in this particular story, I think it's interesting how in book four, we saw Trelawney, the uh, like future predicting professor, as sort of a buffoon, almost a, a mildly negative character. But then in book five, you bring in this overwhelmingly negative character that is Umbridge, and through her bullying of Trelawney, Trelawney becomes actually a sympathetic character. One character flips the sympathy of another character. Part of Umbridge's Inquisition into the school revealed that the average professor at Hogwarts seemed to have been there about 15 years. Contrast that, of course, to the Defense Against the Arts teacher, who on average has been there less than one year. By the way, the y-axis on this particular graph is not drawn at linear scale, but at log scale. In book number five, Dudley receives increasingly ridiculous nicknames from his mother, aunt, and father to the point that they sound kind of like rapper stage. Names. Let's play a game. I'm going to give you a name and you decide in your mind, is this a Dudley nickname or a rapper name? Big D, Dudley name. Neffy Poo, Dudley name. Dreddy Kruger, rapper name. Duddy, Dudley name. Droop E, rapper name. Young Droop, rapper name. Ickle Diddykins, a Dudley name. Bubba Sparks, rapper name. Doe Beezy. Rapper name, Drew Down, also a rapper name, and these are not like made up rapper names, you can google them, they're for real. Diddy Duddy Dums, that's Dudley's name, and finally, Diddy, which is both a Dudley nickname and the name of a rapper. Now we all know that Harry Potter has a lightning bolt mark on his forehead, which makes me think that at some point some hardcore Harry Potter fan has gone into a tattoo parlor and asked for a lightning bolt symbol, and makes me worry that at some point some super super hardcore fan has asked for two lightning bolts, just to show how serious they are about their fanship, not realizing of course that two lightning bolts is the symbol of neo-Nazism. Here's a pie chart about the types of spells cast by magic wands in the Harry Potter series. As you can see, pretty much like 90% of the time, they're using the Lumos spell. So basically, wands are like flashlights without batteries. I always wonder if Harry ever like steps back and realizes the remarkably similar pattern each and every year of his life follows. Like right around the time of his birthday, he has some problems with the Dursleys, ending with some kind of embarrassing comeuppance for them. And then he goes to Hogwarts, has some fun and games for a while, and then about 75% of the way through, stuff gets real, evil comes down, but it's resolved just in time for Hogwarts to receive a final farewell speech from Dumbledore door and then take the train home for the summer. J.K. Rowling is an absolute master at naming. Like if you look at the names of characters and the names of spells, they often have hidden meanings, sometimes double meanings. For example, in the case of this particular spell, if you take the words abracadabra, the classic magic words, and the word cadaver, which means a dead body, put them together, what do you get? Avada Kedavra, which of course is the magic spell that kills someone. Let's return to conclude this video to this particular novel's villain, which is Umbridge, and look at the number of hems in this bar graph. In the case of a pair of pants, you only need one hem to keep a particular piece of fabric from unraveling. In Umbridge's case, she announces her arrival with two hems. Hem, hem with her little like cough thing and that kind of announces the unraveling of any situation in which she appears want to win the copy of the book that i've drawn all of today's graphs in all you have to do is find the golden snitch that has been hidden in this video take a screenshot of it and upload the image to the url listed in the underbar a m p u t w -E.